Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are building a Mars lander that will be launched on the next opportunity for Mars, but it will be complete before we have to pay attention to the Mars missions that are currently arriving, the station and the supply mission, so we have time to build something else before we have to turn to those to focus on them, and I decided another tug would be a good idea. And to that end, we are going to modify this tug, which is basically what we sent last time, and it didn't do such a good job. Part of the flaw there was using the RZ-20s in the upper stage. We'll use the HM-7s for a transfer this time. Uh, but also we have this situation where we were using the AJ-10-138, uh, but because it has a limited burn time of 7 minutes and 30 seconds, we had to slap on all these uh, less efficient 3.6 kilonewton thrusters, or really 4 kilonewton thrusters, which only get 296. Uh, seconds of ISP, so that wasn't good, but fortunately we have the engine that I was supposed to be using in the first place. The AJ-10-190 is here, finally. And it was the whole reason why I was using MHM on 3, and uh, finally we are here, so let's make sure that we also change the RCS to MHM on 3 back again. Okay, and then of course the tank has to be changed. Okay, so, well, that's a long burn time. Now, the AJ-10-190 is a little bit complicated. Its rated continuous burn time is 20 minutes and 50 seconds, but its cumulative burn time is 15 hours. I don't. I guess we got some legacy flight data because we haven't flown it yet. Uh, so, in theory, this will work out for us. And, yeah, <laughs> but we'll try it. 46 minutes of burn time, though. We better not actually have to use that. I mean, it's a tug. It's supposed to push things around. It's slightly more efficient than the AJ-10-138. Hopefully it'll work out. Um, we have a little bit of capacity beyond the 30 ton limit that we have. I'm still carrying the RPWS just in case. Uh, it's counterbalancing the antenna on this side. And this is a 30 ton core. So we'll make sure that this uh, HP aluminum gridded tank is Rain's tool, but as close to the limit as possible. So then we will have the Sirius rocket with the HM7s. As annoying as their limited ignitions are, but we're not using the extra ignition anyway. So we'll hope that we can complete orbit with the HM7s and then transfer. That's a heck of a thrust to weight ratio it's saying there right now, but I think that's because it's, yeah, it was only counting, it was not counting all of them. All right, so yeah, it'll be interesting. It's expensive and we have to do the unlock of the AJ-10-190, but it's worth it. Okay, no tooling. Uh-oh, insufficient Mon-3 MM MMH. Not again. That's <laughs> okay, uh, let me just unlock the AJ-10-190. Okay, it's always this thing. I can't believe it's changed so much. I don't know why. Well, because we were using Aerozine 50 and NTO before instead of MHM on 3. Right, right. Okay, we finished the Mars lander and the Mars tug is well into construction now. And we're getting close to when we have to pay attention to those missions. But we have completed quite a bit of research. Improved lander engines and we're on advanced uncrewed landing. So I, I want to get something else queued, but we only have 520 science. We really need to do more science missions, ironically. We were swimming in science before, but now we are at risk of having nothing for our scientists to do. Merlins? Well, I mean, I'm the European Space Agency. I can't use Merlins. Those are the rules. Well, I guess the most useful thing is a core upgrade. We could get that one. And also... Researcher efficiency upgrade here. Oh, we don't have 300 now. I, I don't want ion engines if I can't time warp through those burns. There's a whole ion engine string here. Be tempting if I had persistent thrust or something, but uh, well, it, we would need larger ion engines anyway, and we do not have those. And the whole line seems to stop right here in 2008. I guess they figure that ion propulsion doesn't happen anymore? I don't know. Uh, at least there should be a slot for it, right? Oh well, anyway, yeah, 
uh, as long as I'm the European Space Agency, there are limitations. There's not a whole lot of reason for me to go down this line, for instance. Uh, SRBs, there is reason for me to go for, but as long as we have pad limitations, uh, heavy SRBs being our solution to getting more payload capacity is not a good idea unless there's some mitigating factor that I'm not taking into account, like they're cheaper to roll out. They're probably cheaper to roll out, but how much cheaper and is it worth going down this whole business? I suppose just for the sake of maybe contemplating it, I'll just get the basics here since it's all cheap. Do they even have European boosters at all? Probably not. Probably they did not think to include Ariane boosters in any of this. Nope. Anyway, so we'll, we'll go up the SRB line and we'll see. All right, so here we are with Mars Station 1. It's going to be entering Mars SOI in a day. And we've got some dotted lines. And I, I don't remember seeing dotted lines before, but maybe I'm just too used to KSB2 at the moment. Comms are at 14%, still sufficient, and that is what our approach looks like. And you know what, I'm not going to mess with it. We'll just take what we've got there, and we are going to periapsis, and then we're going to capture. And it'll be a, we'll capture into this inclination, and we're going to get something else to help us out with that. That tug is not going to be in the same phase as us, but we'll see about that rendezvous if we can. There's Mars. Okay, well, it'll take six minutes to do this burn, so we should probably just get going. All right, ignition. Okay, Mars Station 1 has captured, and I'll have a one-week orbit, I think, for now. Okay, close enough. And if we wanted to correct that 43 degrees of inclination, how much would it cost? Yeah, a mere 92.1 meters per second will get us to 0.1 degrees inclination with respect to Phobos. So that's not a big deal. Uh, well, of course, it's still half our delta V remaining. Uh, that's not great, but it shows that as long as we leave things in a high orbit, we're pretty maneuverable. Uh, let's see if uh, we can do something with the Mars tug to come over here and help push us somewhere. Let's just switch to that and see what it might be able to do for us. It has to rendezvous with us first, and it's in a very different orbit. It's got 2,336 meters per second, but that's when it's not attached to the station, of course. Yeah. So here we need to do a 177 there and then a 555 there in order to get an encounter there, but that would take another 643. I I don't want to do that. <laughs> so that would be more than half our delta V. I don't think we'd be transferring too much to our target right now. It's better to leave the tug waiting for some target on a different occasion where it can rendezvous, rendezvous with it easier. But it's not impossible for this to rendezvous with the station and deliver some propellant that's there. It seems to be that it has an imbalance between AIRZ and NTO, and that's because of the gap between the AJ-10-138 and also the 3.6 kilonewton thrusters. They have different fuel, uh, fuel mixtures or propellant mixtures. Well, we've solved that problem with the next tug, so we won't have that imbalance again. All right, but anyway, we'll leave this here. We're not going to mess with it. Let's focus on Mars Supplies 1, and that does need to get to the station. That should rendezvous with the station, and we'll arrange that uh, pretty much immediately. Well, for Mars Supplies 1 here, Kerbal's being mean and not even showing me my SOI change. I think it's going to happen, but anyway, let's jump to it and see... Hopefully it'll have something, some sort of encounter with Mars there. Yep, there it is. I don't know why I didn't show it in the tracking station, but okay. Oh, but it disappears here too sometimes. Okay, well, we might as well target our station. And we're 10 degrees off from the station, actually. 
but we've got a lot more delta v to work with. So we'll probably correct that on the capture burn. Well, a mere 5 meters per second will help that out and push our descending node to the periapsis. We'll do that first. This is looking okay. The station has been leaking nitrogen. This isn't because there is no actual habitation module on it. Uh, the station is down to 28 kiloliters of nitrogen, so we have to watch out for that. Okay, so capture and a bit of inclination. I don't know if it's wise to try and get a close approach right now. Uh, we've got very close orbit to it, but the separation is 3,300 kilometers. It might not be a good idea to try and match it so much. But anyway, we've got our incl inclination corrected, and it doesn't cost too much more than the prograde amount. It's about 100 more. But we'll be getting closer. Let's go. On to periapsis. I wonder if it'd be possible to get the KSP-2 soundtrack for KSP-1. That could be handy. I do like the KSP-2 soundtrack. Well, the timing of the retro burn was a bit off, so we didn't correct all of the inclination. Uh, that should be fine. I won't bring it all the way down just yet. Let's see what we can do to get an encounter, or a better encounter. Encountering it down here means we're going faster, and so we're going to have to have more speed in order to match it. Okay, well that gets us within render range, and 33 meters per second will be the speed that uh, will be the delta v that we need to match speeds there, and we only need to do 34 meters per second right there. So that looks good to me, but, 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 let us see about comms. Com lines, so we'll still be within comms there. And there, yeah, still I think we will have comms, hopefully. Yeah, well, not quite what I was expecting there, but that's fine, 10 kilometers. Let us go. We are very high over Mars as the station approaches. Okay, now that's in render range. Okay, let's slow down here. Oh, is that a... Oh, I think... Yo, there's just a dock, propellant only docking port. Okay, change of plans, we're docking to that end. Uh, but let's be careful. Uh, let's let's not be so close as we flip around and align with that. I thought it was Apollo docking ports on both ends, but it's not. That's got to be inconvenient because this technically going to be blasted by those thrusters, but then it will blast. It's yeah, that was a bad design choice. Anyway. But we are going for that. Over to the other side. Yeah, the thrusters are going to fire right at each other. But uh, I don't know if that even works. Hmm. Well, I guess this is the time to test it. So we've got 833 meters per second in theory. Uh, but it's not clear that firing these thrusters will actually produce thrust when they're aimed directly at the other set of thrusters. <laughs> so let's find out. Let's find out about that. We can try to correct the inclination with respect to Phobos, thereby setting up things later. Insufficient. Oh no! Oh no! We have insufficient avionics. 
we have insufficient avionics because we've got a 30 ton core on each of these, but combined it's more than 30 tons. <laughs> That's so silly. So we can't turn. We can go forward and backwards, but we can't turn. Okay, well, we're not going to correct inclination with it just yet. Or find that out. I think we should cook up a new module that's carrying a much larger control core. Maybe some extra nitrogen. And also another set of thrusters. And Apollo docking ports on either side. And we will launch that on the next window too. So, so far we've already built the Mars tug. We'll have the Mars lander, Mars tug, and a, a bigger avionics unit for this. And maybe some extra supplies. So let me cook that up because we do have time to construct it. But we do technically have our station in orbit around Mars. That's good. It's just that we have no control over it, which is bad. All right, to solve the problem that we discovered with Mars Station 1, I have a 140 ton core here that we're going to launch with a whole bunch of other stuff. And it was already tooled, so that's good. Otherwise, I'd be using the next generation avionics for it. And otherwise, we've got Apollo docking ports on either side, a whole bunch of the 3.6 kN thrusters as usual, even though they're, well, 311 seconds of ISP is not bad. And then a whole bunch of nitrogen, lithium hydroxide, food, and oxygen. And we're going to go with a service module 4 tank here this time. So I will have to tool that. And that tooling costs 63,000. Uh, and then I've, actually we're tooling all the tanks here. I've adjusted their sizes. So yeah, we're just going to take that cost this time around instead of having a whole bunch of little tiny tanks all over the place. And that'll be a little bit more efficient. I've decided to add external ECLSS modules for the life support. We've got one that's lithium hydroxide scrubber and the other is a nitrogen pressure controller just in case no, uh, we just in case we need more pressure control. And otherwise, let's just double check that the RCS ports are all MMH and Mon3. They are. And so we are going to go with that. So that's all being packaged up. That looks like the right orientation. Uh, we can probably change the fairing location. And we will have we have something to unlock. Hopefully we don't have to we, yeah, we don't have to rebuild the pad again. Uh, oh, the external ECLSS module. This is the first time we are doing that. Okay. So that's just as a backup measure. And I am going to Oh, I shouldn't do that until I tool. Let's tool. Tool all. So we have uh, tooling credit. So that's going to take a while. It's actually fairly light compared to some of our other payloads. And that's good. That's probably because the service module 4 tank instead of using the service module 1 tank there. But otherwise it's a good amount of supplies that we're sending over. But even that doesn't take all of our time until the next window. And we still haven't found a use for our nuclear stage that we've got propped up there. I think we'll send another lander, and if the first lander works, then we'll have the other lander ready to go. But of course, if it doesn't work, then we'll have a problem. You know, taking a look at this, maybe we should go with the AJ-10-190s instead of these. But then again, the AJ-10-190s have less thrust. Um... They have 26.7. There is another configuration for them. A lot of ignitions would be nice. There is the Orion configuration, which is closer to this. I don't know if we have that unlocked. But let's just see. 88. That's pretty cheap, too. Advanced long nozzle is more efficient, but same... Time, uh, time limitation. Aerozine and Mon 1, just what I need. Another fuel mixture, and one that the RCS can't use, mind you. 
4,960, and then if we go back... Oh, well, that's 4,960 versus 4,564, so that's a big difference. On the other hand, uh, we didn't have enough thrust-to-weight ratio, so we would need more of these, and they aren't fitting great. Well, actually, the Orion configuration is here. 500 ignitions could save us a lot of trouble. That cubic octagonal strut can't be tweak scaled. Um, we're going to have to surreptitiously clip these in a bit. More than they are already. So, we're replacing these AJ-10 advanced short nozzle ones with the AJ-10 190s, and these are configured for the Orion configuration, and I'll add some extra thrusters down here because it'll make me feel better. 22 tons, and that's not including the heat shield, I think that's considered decoupled by that point. Yeah, that's not including, uh, included in the 22 tons. Got a 30 ton controller there, that's fine. And what are the drogue chutes told? Well, they're only told 16 tons here. So let's bump that up. Let's have another ladder here just in case. So we've made some refinements. This is more efficient and maybe a better deal overall and so we'll call this Mars Lander M for MH and Mod 3. Let's build one of these. Now can we launch all these things in the same window? I mean the big problem is you know getting the pad ready again and then rolling them out. Oh Detlev Hartman uh, retired. Well, that is something we have to watch out for. It's tough when we have like two years between windows. Basic solid rocket engines. Here we go. All our solid rocket technologies are coming in. We're not really accumulating science that quickly. Let me see if I can cook up a Mars probe that might have some new science on it so that we can get some of that. Orbital perturbation with that, those inclination requirements we might not have done. Now there's an RPWS-2 and there's the 3. We definitely haven't sent the 3 since we haven't unlocked it. Well, we're going to have a RPWS-3. It includes the other two. Advanced visible imaging device. Hmm. That seems better than the one that we have in here, right? So we don't need to... Uh, we'll have that instead of this. We'll just have infrared radiometer 3, though I'm, I feel like I've done it. I'm, I could check in there, but I don't have anything else to put on anyway. I'll increase this score to be able to handle 3 tons. So instead of just having this engine, we'll have an extra stage that could give us a little boost for capture, and then this could get to various locations to do the science. Maybe even go to Phobos and Deimos. Okay, I'll just have one engine on here though. It says feed pressure okay, that one's okay. We've got 4,000 to work with. It seems like a fair amount. Do they fit inside the fairing? Seems that way. It is a Deneb A3, it looks like. Well, let's make it a Deneb A4. Still using the old engines on this one. Ah, these are even RZ20 Mark 1s, so I need to up that. Old craft files. Well, we're gonna call that Duna 4. We're unlocking something, apparently. Oh, the RPWS, of course. Uh, oh, right. Um, 
they had changed some stuff and like every core needs to be changed. All right, hopefully it's all configured properly now. Okay, yes, it is add to the integration list. So we have a probe as well as all the rest of the stuff going over to Mars, not Duna. And we'll see if this one works out for us. Opportunities 2024, September 29th. And not using this path for anything else. So I guess having it take until August is okay. We'll just leave it like that. I don't want to hire too many people and then have to fire them. Main pad, we're still going to be done with plenty of time to spare. But can I roll out more than what I've got right now? I don't think so. Unless the engineers are way more efficient at rolling things out now. I mean, at least it's not a nuclear thing. But like, this one says it's gonna take 37 days to roll out. That one 21 days, that one 20 days. This one 36 days. Just as it is, I mean, we're gonna have to rush it and then how long does it take? 24, 14, 13, 24. So, I don't think we have that much time even. We, I don't know if it'll benefit from us hiring more people, or if it's at its limit. But basically we just need another pad at this point, I think. Well, we'll be accumulating some funds if we don't build anything more here, so that might help us out. Um, max at ELA 6 is 3,248. I won't hire them yet, but right before we have to launch, I'll try and max it out. Okay, I've got a time warp for a few months here. Okay, all our rockets are done. We are one month before the window, and we are going to hire a whole bunch more people. 14, 13, 18. Okay, well, the most important thing, I think, is to make sure our station's in, in good shape. So Mars Supply is two, and then the lander. So the first thing that's going to launch is our probe. Uh, sort of to be expected. And is this still a good time even though it's 22 days before the window? Let's, well, let's keep the insertion burn. Um, even if we go right now, it's probably okay. In fact, even a little bit past the nice blue spot, we could probably still make it. Insertion burns are not great in this window though. I think we're good, in good enough shape to launch right now. So, first launch of the 2024 Mars window. We are firmly in the future now. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Still with those RZ2s and the Viking, whichever ones they are. Viking 2s, in fact. I probably could have replaced those. Uh, this was an old, old craft file and I clearly did not replace all things I could have replaced. Okay, booster set. Fairing, ah, oh, sorry, first stage set. And fairing set. Alright. All is well. Well, we could probably do this video imaging here, and... Well, that one is still Earth flying. Oh, well, well, they're poking out now. Everything started. Okay, the RZ-20s. Our little makeshift centaur stage. British centaur stage, potentially. So, this stage won't be able to do the entire transfer. We will need this stage to finish. I gave the probe very generous solar panels, too. Okay, we're in orbit, but sort of a lopsided orbit. It's been a while since I launched a Denim rocket and didn't quite get the trajectory right, but that's okay. Okay, and selling fuel down. And go. Both engines have lit. And on it goes to Mars.
Okay, well, we need one set of thrusters. All right. And we go. Uh, well, I don't see it coming in, but that's not unusual. Let's see where we're at here. Nope, still getting closer. Up, ah, we're not getting closer anymore. All right, mid course correction. Oh, that's a good enough start. We'll have this maneuver as our mid course correction. And that's in the alarm clock. So, this is on its way out, and we will do the subsequent launches in the next video. So, we've got the big ones, of course. Uh, we've got the Mars Supplies 2 is next, and then the Mars Lander, and then the Mars Tug, and then the Mars Lander M, and we'll go in that order. So, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.